которые идут. Сегодня у нас Марк Андри из Парижа и из Москвы, потому что этот год он проводит в лаборатории на этом этаже, и расскажет он нам про теорию чисел. Спасибо за, за, за предложение. Мне очень нравится находиться там в Москве. Сегодня я, я хочу говорить о некоторых дюфантовых уравнениях. Конечно, вы знаете, что дюфантовые уравнения, система уравнений, Uh, so, uh, 
perhaps I should start by giving examples of what I mean by uh, to find an equation that gives rise to algebraic uh, group structure. The, the, the first example, uh, I guess historically, is the Fermat equation. So, uh, Often called the Pell equation, but historically it's a nonsense. It's Fermat who, who at least that, that, that studied it. And here you look for solutions, uh, solutions in, in, in Z, and there is a, a very easy group structure which, well, you can, des you can describe it without making any algebraic extension, but the easiest way to, to describe it is you multiply. Um, It's a, an analytic curve, so it's well. Describe it naturally. Uh, I write it like this. So let's say let's attribute this to 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 to, to model. So it's a theorem, not a group structure. That you do to to model. And here you look for rational solutions, and here the group law. It would be longer to write the formulas, but you can we can make a, a drawing if I. Uh, I draw the curve like this. Then to add two points, you draw the line between the two points. Uh, and you take the, it's not a third intersection point, it's a cubic, so there is a third intersection point, but uh, it's a symmetric, and this will be Q. And so the, both of these the group of solutions are finitely generated uh, group, and we're going to ask for the size of the generators. Before doing that, I give one more, uh, a bit more sophisticated example, which will not be as fully described, but still, it's nice to see that. Uh, And then I, I impose that it has a, a triple 
contact with the spinote. So let's say the three P naught. So I use uh, Bezu's theorem, the intersection of a quartet with a cubic. It must have 12 points, counted with multiplicity. So there's nine, so there's three more. Uh, and then Q. So just like here, I need to make a symmetry to have really the, the addition. Here I have those three points they define well, minus. You already used the letter Q. Q, sorry. So it should be P R. R. Okay. So I need to take the symmetric. So taking the symmetric here is I. Oh, sorry. I forgot to say that. Imposing, of course, the space <coughs> of cubics has dimension 10. So imposing nine points is exactly what it takes to define a, a cubic. And for the conic, I need uh, five conditions. So what I will impose is that the point goes through uh, so R and point R second. I get to twice the node. And then I get three points. And, and, and those three points is exactly what, what defines x plus y. So this way I get a, another more sophisticated addition. And uh, the, the, the generalized modern day theorem claims that actually the group of rational points on this is, is finitely generated. There's a finite number of triples that generate all the others with this, uh, with this construction. And um, this is the, the thing I want to, to, to talk about. I wanted uh, you to have concrete examples in, in, in mind. So oh, this is the most concrete. This is, well, this is slightly more abstract, but not, not that much. You have some problems on the diagonals. Oh, no. Well, uh, by rationally, it's good. It, it defines by rationally. I mean, to be a bit more precise, there is a, 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 a map to, to J, which is a true group, such that, uh, well, which is an isomorphism outside a, a, a Zariski closed sub sub subset, which you can describe ex explicitly, but it's a, it's a bit complicated. Um, but it's not really the, the doubles that create problem. It's uh, the point where the cubic is not uniquely defined. Uh, for most points, you will have only one cubic going through the nine points. But for a few configurations, you have independent cubics. So of course, you have to glue them together. Um, Actually, it's obvious it's the, I did not like this, the roots of unity. 
the algebraic numbers whose power, some power is one, uh, times, well, that are as a group, it is isomorphic to that. Uh, I'll explain in a minute that we know exactly what the rank is here. So that's uh, one example. The other more difficult example is, uh, so A in a given rank, And the, 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 the modern frame theorem says that same thing, the group of rational points this time uh, is uh, finitely generated. So we try to take this, we have a portion part, and then you have uh, an infinite part which is finitely generated. Now, uh, in this case, of course, the roots of unity are usually easy to compute and easy to bound. Uh, here it's not that obvious, there are many open problems on, on, on torsion points on, on the billion variety. But anyway, I will, I will forget the torsion part, I will concentrate on, 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 on this part. But th there is a natural notion of size of points uh, that I, I, will, I will define in, in a moment. And the problem that I want to look at is, um, well, let's say, this is, you can put into you can both put them into a, a vector space where you have a natural norm and you want uh, what you want is, is um, a bound for generators uh, of the group so of course if you had ask for the, the bound for any generator it's silly because you can always replace a generator by a multiple but uh, of course you ask for minimal uh, generators um, and then that makes sense if you want to describe explicitly the solution of your Leofa time equation you, you want to find bound for the, the, to be able to find those, those, those generators and uh, so, of course, I will need to define a bit more precisely what is the size that is associated with. So it. It's easy there, it's most, more sophisticated, of course, here. But here, there is a, a natural quadratic Euclidean norm, and here, a usual norm, whatever, whatever you take. Um, so, what, um, how, do we, uh, how we, do we define those, those embeddings? define the quantities you want to bound in terms of what? I want to define the quantity, of course. So it's easier to do for, for, over a number field. Well, a number field, so I take the most naive approach, it's always generated by a, a, one algebraic number. And so the, the minimal polynomial that arises uh, like this, and you have uh, R1 real roots and say uh, R2 pairs of, 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 complex, uh, of complex solutions. So that means you have, uh, you have R1 embedding of K into R, that would send alpha to one of the real roots, and you have R2 pairs uh, K into C with these are pairs, they go in pairs with, with the complex con con conjugation. So that defines uh, two numbers. So the first claim is that you can compute easily this rank in terms of R1 and R2. Uh, actually, I can write away the formula R is equal to R1 is R2 minus 1. So I almost the proof and, and also the, uh, the quantity in terms of which we want to bound things. The first thing is, so you can use this to embed uh, this into R1 plus C to the R2 in the obvious way. And, uh, well, it's not too, too difficult to see that this gives a, a lattice. So uh, this, this gives a lattice in that. So you have a notion of what some people call it volume, other people call it co-volume. <coughs> Anyway, it's the volume of a fundamental world domain. So the, the, the volume here of the lattice, well, is 
essentially, there's a small factor that uh, is essentially the discriminant. So I claim that this is, um, let's say, the easy invariant of the number field. So maybe the definition is not the most natural one, but it's the easiest in, in this talk. And I want to bound everything in terms of this, this quantity. Um, the other lattice that comes naturally is when you look at uh, units. So, classic units. Of course, I want to have a homomorphism group, so I need to take logarithm. So, if I take logarithm, I need to take absolute value. So, here I'm sending x, say, to uh, sigma of x when sigma is all these embeddings. And here, so I take the log of sigma, and I have to take the, the, the modulus, otherwise it's, it's not well defined. So in it, this map gives me almost an embedding. So into this line, R, R1, plus R2. But of course, I don't take twice the, 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 the complex conjugate, because it, it's the same. Um, so it's almost an embedding in the sense that if I mod out by the roots of unity, I get an there I get an embedding. Well, the kernel is exactly that's not difficult to, to, to prove. Uh, it's not difficult to prove that the image is a discrete group. It doesn't have maximal rank because there's a relation, uh, the product of all the sigma x is equal to 1. Uh, Okay, here if I take really all the thing and the complex group. Uh, the absolute value. Uh, uh, yes. uh, so here I take all of them, the one and the conjugate, then it's, it's, it's one. That tells me that those coordinates they have a, a linear relation. So there's a linear relation of the type x1 plus x l1. But you should, you should square. Square the absolute value in the complex case. Uh, okay, you say, I said in this product I take all the no, embeddings. Okay. Now, if I look at this one, then I, I need to add a two. You have to put a two somewhere. Okay. That's a <laughs> um, so the, the equation would be like this plus r x r one plus r two equals zero. So actually, the image lies in the hyperplan. And what is more, well, it's easy to see that it's a discrete subgroup. What is more difficult, really, the content of the Rickles theorem is that it is a, a, a lattice. So uh, the image is a lattice in, uh, well, factor r to minus 1, of course, because there's one equation. And if you show that it has maximal rank, then you, you get the, the formula. You get the formula for the rank. And so, in some sense, there is really a quantity that we want to compute or estimate that is called the regulator, uh, which is the volume of that lattice. This lattice. Uh, so it is called the regulator of unit or the regulator of the, of the field. And uh, why essentially uh, this is, well, this is elementary, but it, it deserves to be an, uh, underlined. Why getting an upper bound for this is enough to solve this problem? I will just make a, 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 a picture. Actually, it's not entirely enough. What you need is a, you need an upper bound Uh, for the volume of the lattice, and you need a, a lower bound for the smallest vector in the lattice, uh, the uh, lower bound for the smallest vector. Uh, I'll perhaps I'll make a, a drawing. You could have something, you could have a lattice like this. So, in some sense, in this case, the volume of the lattice tells you that you have generators of, uh, of, of this type. 
but you could have the lattice with exactly the same volume in this shape. Let's say. Okay, the volume are the same, but here you have one very small generator and one very large, and you can't make it smaller, you can't make it smaller the second. So, uh, to be a bit more precise, you can, you can say the following. Uh, embedding 
uh, which means for, 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 for those who know that um, the, the pullback of the canonical bundle of, of the ample uh, O1 here is a symmetric uh, line bundle on the abelian drag, which you can always achieve by moving a little bit the embedding. It simplifies the uh, same. Then you have a notion of heights. Well, the easiest to define to define it for a point with coordinates in the Q. Well, uh, if the coordinates are in Q, you can, well, you're in projective space, so you can change, you can multiply by a constant on the coordinates. So you can multiply and you can uh, make all the coordinates integral, and then you can divide by the GCD, so you can uh, you can find coordinates uh, which are co-prime. Well, in this case, uh, you define the height uh, which is the log of the maximum of the xi. Well defined because you, you only have a sign now left, and of course the absolute value that is the, 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 the sign. I take the log, it will be uh, clear in, in, in the next line why I take the log. Let's say this, this, this height, if I didn't take the log, would be the exponential of a quadratic form. And if I take the log, it's a quadratic form. So it's much simpler, of course, to have a quadratic form. And uh, uh, this would be the, the, the veil height. The, um, there is a, a normalization process due to, 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 to Necron and Tate, which says that uh, I can find a much more canonical height, which I can obtain like this as the limit of mc to n and this will be the, the, the quadratic the quadratic map. The, 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 the property actually is that uh, h minus h hat is bounded. So you don't change much the, the general properties of, of, of height. And uh, the nice thing is that now um, this H hat is a quadratic form in a, in a strong sense. Of the, of the regulator, 
uh, defining it as a determinant where mutate generators of the lattice, I call them, I'm not going to write that word, I can buy. The scalar product is the scalar product associated to the, to the quadratic, uh, quadratic map. And well, this defines me a natural quantity, which is, uh, well, if I'm interested in the volume of the lattice, Just in this case, the square root of this regulator. So, just as I was interested in obtaining bounds for the regulator of the units for a number field, the interesting question here is obtaining a bound for this, obtaining a bound for the volume of the lattice is the same as obtaining a bound for this, for this regulator. Now, the question of a lower bound on abelian variety is more complicated than, than, than in number field. But at least for one abelian variety, it's not, uh, it's not difficult. Uh, I, will, I will consider it as a much easier um, problem. Uh, now, there remains uh, to defend. I want to obtain bounds. So for the number field, I said I want to obtain bound in terms of the discriminant. Um, Okay, it is more difficult to define the, the, the there's a good notion of height of, uh, of a billion variety that is a bit more difficult to, to, to define. So I will just define it in the case of elliptic curves or over Q and say that there is a general machinery to do it in, in, in general. So if I have uh, an abelian variety, dimension 1 over Q, which is an elliptic curve, so this is the equation that I wrote, you can actually uh, simplify the, the equation and then you get something like this by changing coordinates. And you can further uh, simplify it in order to have A, B, and Z. It's a bit the same process uh, as, 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 as here. And, well, still, it's not still uh, well defined because you can change coordinates. You can multiply here by a power of 4 or something, and here a power of 6, it's the same thing. So it would be really well defined if you add that, you, that for, for, for all prime numbers, uh, you have either P4 does not divide A, or P6 does not divide B. In some sense, that gives a minimal model for the elliptic curve. And it's really minimal in the strong geometric sense, except for p equals 2 and 3. So there, there will be a little constant floating, which don't matter, don't matter here. So if I do that, then this a and b uh, are, 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 are well defined, associated to the, to, to the elliptic curve. And, uh, well, a quantity that is uh, relatively simple to consider is the maximum, well, I will write it like this. You take a uh, to the power uh, 1 over 4 and b to the power 1 over 6. Uh, but that would be a, a, good notion, a good notion of that. Of course, I'm hiding. Why do I put coefficients one over four, one over six? That's, that comes from the. If you use more machinery, it's quite natural to, 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 to do that. But let's say this is uh, a measure, a measure, a rough measure of the size of the equation, so the size of the complexity of the abelian variety. So it's natural to try to obtain bounds in terms of this this quantity. So for the. Um, uh, for the number field, I want bounds in terms of the discriminant, and for the abelian uh, variety, so of course I have not defined in general what would be the height, but it's something similar to, to, to that. I want to obtain bound in terms of the height of the, the abelian variety. Um, now, even if this question is rather natural, it turns out to be uh, very difficult. It's essentially sort of a number field and essentially unsolved over abelian varieties. So we do have ideas or conjectures that would uh, imply the, the, the results we, we look for. This 
squared, I, I want to explain. Um, So the 
residue of the delta function is, is one, that is easy to, 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 to prove. The residue of the delta zeta function is actually the same for uh, our object here. The residue is one. Well, uh, it is some, well, some integer, I will explain what it is, but it's a positive integer times the regulator we are looking for uh, over the square root of the discriminant so by the way the discriminant I always write for the absolute value of the discriminant in those, I mean it is possible to define the sign of the, of the discriminant but I haven't done it that so, so it's always the absolute value of the, of the discriminant and then small factors which uh, you can write as uh, well 2 to the r1 2 pi to the r2 and the number of roots of unity so in some sense those factors are, are trivial because they are very easy to compute and it's easy to show that I mean, they are not very big and not very small the, the, the whole. so it's, it's almost like if it were a, 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 a so this is nice because um, well here you have the regulator and you want to bound it in terms of that so you think you're all, almost done well what you need is estimates for the so H A is the so called that's number so it's the number of well it's the number of ideals modulo principal ideals it's a measure of the defect of the, the, the ring OK is not anymore a uh, principle in general, so it's the number of ideals with your principle ideal. So by the way, it's a, it's a very of course a very interesting and uh, important invariant of the of the number field. Um, and so obviously it's at least one, so you get uh, well, if you, what you need is, a, is an upper bound for the for the well, this residue I will denote the, the, the principal value at one. I mean, the first when you write the Taylor expansion at one, it's the first coefficient that's non-zero. So you need a, an upper bound. And luckily enough, I mean, if I draw um, the complex plan, in, in all this theory of zeta function, you have uh, to see that there is, I haven't said it, but there is a, a functional equation, there is a symmetry, which tells you what. There you know the function quite well, because you have an absolutely convergent theory, or absolutely convergent real product. Uh, by the functional equation, you know the function quite well here. So the functional equation, the symmetry is at, at one half. Here it is zero. And the, the behavior of the function is much more mysterious uh, in, in the critical strip. In particular, for example, the question of where does this data function vanishes is very easy here. And inside the, the, the critical strip, it's a famous Riemann hypothesis, which you can generalize to that in data function, but uh, no one has a clue how, how, how to prove it. Um, so, but in, the, <coughs> in this case, we're lucky because the upper bound doesn't really require working uh, inside the critical strip, the upper bound. You can get it, or well, you can get it as the limit of, of values here. Essentially, you write upper bounds for values very near, and you take the limit. And, uh, you, 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 you can do that. And if you do that, uh, you, you will find bounds of the type um, the log of the discriminant to the power. I have not given a notation for the degree, but if I call d the dimension of the field. You can get, for example, easily, you can get better bounds, not that better. That one is relatively uh, easy. And, uh, well, if you do that and you plug this uh, into this, using that the class number 
is at least one, what you get is that uh, the regulator is smaller than, well, let's say some, well, you can break uh, some constants, there's that case, uh, so one half and something smaller. So either you put a plus epsilon or you can even put a uh, power of log to work. So, um, uh, whatever you obtain, a good, a, a relatively good bound for the for, 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 for the regulator that way. But using it is perhaps surprising to use that function to uh, to get a Geoffrey statement uh, like this. Um, but this is uh, this is the only known method that gives an, 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 an upper bound uh, for a general number, number field. For project imaginary number field, there, there's other method that gives this. Um, there is um, another difficult uh, question, which is interesting. I will only mention it briefly because it not part of upper bound for, for, for generators, is uh, can we get lower bounds for, 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 for this value? So this is the celebrated uh, Brown symbol. Uh, is that you have an uh, estimate of the same kind, at least you can, well, uh, let me say two things. First, you have estimates of the same kind with the power of the negative power of lower arrhythm of the discriminant. If you assume a, a tiny part of the remind hypothesis, if you assume that there is a little, a little disk with no zeros here, which is certainly true because, well, most of us believe in the Riemann hypothesis, and the Riemann hypothesis tells that tells you that all the zeros are on the line uh, real part of s equals one half. But certainly the none is close to one, uh, except that it's unknown. So if you knew that, then you would get uh, a lower bound of the same kind, but just with a negative exponent here. The, um, the true potential of the Brouwer Ziegel theorem is you can obtain a lower bound of the type delta minus epsilon. So here the notation means that you have a constant that depends on epsilon but you're allowed to take any positive exile, as, as small as you wish. Uh, this is quite a deep, uh, a deep theorem. I mean, it's much harder than the, than the, the, the much, much harder than the, than the lower bound. Um, and it is interesting in the sense that I can restate this, this statement as saying that Okay, the regulator can oscillate. It can be small, it can be large, and the class number can also be small or be quite large. But the product of the two is extremely regular. It's almost the size square root of the discriminant. So the, the, one way to reformulate the Brouwer Degas theorem is to say is the following: is to say that the limit. This limit is equal to one. But in some sense, the product really behaves like the square root of the discriminant. So, the limit is taken on what? Well, uh, let's say, well, in bar is zero. It's uh, the degree is fixed or bounded. It's, it's, it's the same. And well, you want to take true families, uh, so the discriminant goes to infinity. Um, there are uh, very uh, interesting contributions who try to uh, relax this condition or change, um, and if you relax to them too much, you have to change the statement. So um, I will uh, mention that uh, um, Misha and, and, and Bradley's um, Supposed to write planets also. V L E no V V C. So 
they uh, they have produced uh, they have produced examples where uh, so of course you have you, you still have this permanent bond to infinity otherwise you don't have you only have finitely many but um, you relax this and you allow the degree to, to go to infinity and they produce so uh, they exist examples uh, where you well I will write it like this in order not to, to uh, let's say if you have a constant delta depends on, on, on the tower uh, where you get constants that are different from one uh, this is something that is extremely interesting in uh, analogy with uh, communication theory. There is an analog of, of this over finite fields, and that's directly connected to coding theory. And these examples, which are constructed where you get uh, you get a limit that's different from one, are precisely to take the analog of a function field. They are uh, precisely those who a priori give good uh, good codes. Um, so there is a, 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 a beautiful theory that's been developed by, by Misha and, and Sergei here. Um, so I wanted to to, 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 to quote this, but uh, after I want to go back to a billion varieties and uh, well discuss. Well, uh, Perhaps just uh, make hints to what we can do, or try to do, or before I begin writing, and then we can make uh, a pause. Um, the analog of a billion varieties is the so called L function. So I will give the definition only, only after the pause. I will just say that. There is a uh, okay, like uh, there is an L function which is uh, well also uh, it is also uh, a directly series that's defined by the I will just write it like this for the moment as an Euler product. Um, and uh, the drawing here is slightly different. Uh, yeah, the system of, of absolute convergence is three half, and we do have at least a conjectural uh, symmetry around one. So here we have one uh, let me point out right away that uh, the um, sort of hinting that there is functional equation and analytic continuation. Uh, it's conjectured to be true in general. But it, so it's known uh, essentially in two cases, uh, in the CM case, complex multiplication case, and uh, the modular case, which is when you can prove that the abelian variety comes from a modular, from a modular form or automorph automorphic form. So for an elliptic curve uh, Q, this is the big theorem of Y, so it's nothing trivial. And in other cases, it's conjectured, but not, not known. So we're already in, in trouble here. At least we have large, interesting families for which an elliptic continuation is, is, is known. So this is the analog of, the, of this picture. Now, um, what is the analog of, there is an analog of this formula. Unfortunately, it's a conjecture, and it's the famous version of that conjecture. Which, uh, I will write it under. Instead of having a pole, so if you assume an continuation, the point we look at, so I should 
could maybe read this the picture for the delta KS, but here we're talking zero, one, and one half. Um, so, assuming an analytic continuation, or that we are in one, one of the cases, the conjecture says that, uh, well, first, the order S equals 1, it's again S equals 1 of L of S, gives the rank of A of K. So something I hinted at was that the rank for abelian gravity was much more mysterious. And indeed it is. It's possible to give bound for the rank, but to compute it exactly is quite difficult. And this conjecture would give a beautiful answer to the proposal of how to interpret the, 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 the rank. And then the, the second part of the conjecture uh, gives uh, well, what I call the, the special values of the first non zero coefficient of here. It would be instead of the residue, it would be the limit of L of S over S minus 1 to the rank. Well, they conjecture the formula of the, sh of the following shape. There is a, a, a group traditionally denoted the sharp for Shafarovich uh, times the regulator. Uh, regulator. Well, times something I'm going to cheat a little bit. It's not really the height, it's something that really looks like the, 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 the height. something that is equivalent in the sense that to upside uh, the, the, the height. And, uh, well, perhaps before the after the post I will give more details on the terms. There are terms that are more complicated than those for the, for the uh, Teletin Zeta function, but still much easier than the regulator and the, and the teacher for the group. So the hook would be, uh, well, Granting the best Renaton diet conjecture, which by the way includes the finiteness of this group, which is not known in, in, in general. So it's a finite group, so the cardinality is at most is at least one. So we would get a bound uh, well this, this L function there is uh, now other complications. It has an analogy, but there's there's a shift because this one is is is, is um, it's not a misprint, it's true, but it's not the same one. So here the one is on the, the edge of the critical strip, so it's almost in the in the half plane of convergence. Here it's in the middle of the critical strip, so that's where the, the behavior is much more mysterious. Okay. Nevertheless, I mean, it can be proven that if you assume the, 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 the general uh, Riemann hypothesis that uh, this value is smaller than uh, the height to a power epsilon. If you don't assume a GR arch, you, you, can, you can get an exponent here, uh, but certainly not a, a epsilon. The epsilon is the analog of for, for, for no more analytic number theory of uh, Lindelof hypothesis, uh, which is unproven for, for the Riemann theta function. So certainly we don't know how to prove it for this more complicated uh, L function. It's a consequence of the, 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 the Riemann hypothesis. And so if you grant that and the Bertram and Dyer conjecture, um, you end up with showing that the, the regulator is smaller than well, C epsilon, the height 1 plus epsilon. So uh, again, you have to assume a uh, version of the entire project of that, you really can't do anything without, without it. And uh, so to have a, a good exponent like this, you need the Riemann hypothesis for the moment. And if you don't want to accept Riemann hypothesis, you get the worst exponent, you, you still get an interesting uh, answer. So perhaps I need to pause now. And because I'll give more details after. Uh, you don't have this. No, no.